We're playing reggae today. So yes, we are going to be covering how I use Logic to play Logic Drummer to play reggae patterns. We're going to do some housekeeping first. I write music in Logic to serve as backing tracks for my own practice and for my performances. I don't have access to a live drummer. If I had access to a live drummer, I would take my finished Logic Drummer tracks to a live drummer for his or her own interpretation so I could get a live drummer recording as well as the Logic Drummer tracks, but that's just not possible in my case. Some other key concepts are important before we actually dig into Logic. You should be able to count out a tempo or be familiar with what the word tempo means. There are tools in Logic that will do that for you, but if you can do it in your head ahead of time, it's very helpful. Listen to a lot of reggae. Clap your hands in time with the beat. If you have a metronome, not the one in Logic, but a regular little portable metronome, turn it on while the song is playing and adjust the metronome until it's roughly in time with the music. That's your tempo, beats per minute. Project key does not really matter until you're ready to record other instruments, uh, like steel drums, vibes, and marimba. So at the beginning, you don't really need to set the project key, but it's a good idea to get into the habit of doing it. Common keys for reggae, and this will come into play later, are C major, D major, E major, G major, and A major. The key we're going to be working in when we actually open Logic is going to be A major. So when you're in Logic, you're going to set your time signature. Typical time signatures for reggae are two-fourths or four-fourths. And as you see on the screen, two-fourths equals two beats per measure, and every quarter note gets one beat. This is just basic music theory. Four-fourths equals four beats per measure, and every quarter note gets one beat. This does make a difference. A logic drummer uses the time signature and the beats per minute, or the tempo. Um, and then the next thing you're going to want to do is set your tempo. For reggae, um, you can keep it kind of slow. Um, a good reggae, a good beginner uh, tempo while you're learning how to do this is anything between 70 and 80. So our project that we're going to work on today is in 70 beats per minute. And yeah, uh, key ma key matters when you're using other instruments and tuned percussion like steel drums. So set your project key. Initially, it doesn't matter, but it's a good habit to get into when you're starting a project is to set your project key. All right, and uh, more key concepts. For an acoustic drum kit in reggae, um, I dampen each kit piece a lot. I just find it sounds a lot better and a lot more authentic. And for the kick, the snare, and the toms, Normally, you don't really need to tune them up for anything else, but I tune them up to a higher pitch than normal for reggae. It sounds better. And for steel drums, vibes, tongue drums, etc., remember these are tuned instruments, unlike an acoustic drum kit like you see here. An acoustic drum kit is not a tuned instrument. Uh, but steel drums, vibes, tongue drums, etc., they are tuned instruments. So you're going to make sure that you tune them to play in the desired key. And just a few other things. You don't really need to know how to read sheet music. But if you do know how to read sheet music, it may be helpful to know that the typical reggae or ska drum rhythms uh, look like this. Uh, a typical reggae rhythm is called a one drop. And one drop is very, uh, very common in reggae. It's what you hear when you listen to a song like Three Little Birds. Um, um, and, and, and most of Bob Marley's tunes. And actually most of Bob Marley's tunes seem to be one drop with the 16th notes played on the hi-hat. And that's what that middle uh, graphic looks like. The third one is one drop. It's halftime played on a hi-hat. You don't have to know how to read sheet music, but if you do know how to read sheet music, it does help 
just to get some kind of a visual representation of what we're talking about. So we're going to open Logic and add two drummer tracks. All right, we're going to add drummer there and add another drummer track. Set your time signature to either two-fourths or four-fourths. Both are common in reggae, but I find it easier to write reggae drummer rhythms in Logic using a two-fourths time signature. Set the tempo to something really slow, usually about 70 beats per minute. For demo purposes, I'm going to use 70. All right, got 70. We're going to change our key to something that's common in uh, reggae, we'll call it A major. Yep. And our time signature. Change that to two fourths. Okay. And I'm going to expand that out so I can see all the bars. Delete the regions that drummer fills in automatically. We don't need them. And you'll notice when you add drummer tracks that Logic will automatically default to a drummer and a style. Usually it defaults to uh, Darcy and Songwriter or Kyle and Pop Rock. At this point it doesn't matter which drummer and style Logic fills in. You just delete any drummer regions that it automatically fills in and make sure you have two empty drummer tracks. So after you have your drummer tracks added, uh, drummer is going to fill in some regions by default. And you just want to delete those. We don't need them. So we have the drum kit designer window open and we're in the controls view. Clicked on editor, this is what we would see. We want to look at controls. I'm going to drag this out to the right so you can see all the controls. And what we're going to do is we're going to mute kit pieces that we do not want drummer to play. Um, Drummer is kind of unique in that if you add a lot of fills or you add a complicated beat preset, uh, Drummer is going to fill in. This is what makes it nice, but you, you it also kind of takes some of the control away from you. Uh, it's going to play some kit pieces that you might not want it to play. This is where we have the ultimate control over what Drummer plays and what it doesn't play. We're going to mute the pieces we do not want it to play. I want it to play when I when I save my Caribbean kit like I would have uh, my reggae kit I want uh, when drummer plays this kit I want it to play kick snare toms hi-hat and the cymbals I do not want it to play claps or anything else like that so what I'm gonna do is scroll down through here and mute everything that I don't want it to play so I don't want it to play cowbell no matter so in the in the in the drummer editor even if I click on percussion and I click on claps or whatever it's not gonna play them we don't want it to I'm gonna mute the claps we're gonna click mute the tambourine and the shaker and we're, for now we're gonna leave the symbols unmuted um, you can always mute them if you want to, but this is how I want my drum kit set up so that when drummer plays it for reggae, um, it all it only plays the kit pieces that I want. And we're going to save it, and I already have. 
I never want the drummer and the drummer in Logic who plays this drum kit. I never want it to play anything other than the kick, toms, snare, hi hat, and cymbals. <laughs>